In this video, I'm gonna design my ultimate Mercedes E-Class, bringing in the 1991 E500, modernizing it with some graphic features from modern Mercedes. Just imagine having the old body with new technology and a couple of new styling cues. I think it would look absolutely insane, and that's what we're gonna figure out in this video. But before we do that, let's have a look at these generations of the Mercedes E-Class, because a lot has happened in the history of the E-Class here, specifically when it comes to the styling. So let's start with the 1991 Mercedes E500 up here, as you can see. This beast of a machine. It has a 5-liter naturally aspirated V8 putting out 326 horsepower. And what I love about this Mercedes E-Class is this is like peak Mercedes design. They had the uh, W140 S-Class, which just looks so so stately they have the mercedes 190 and they have the mercedes e500 i love this design this is the facelifted design you can see that for example looking at this hood is better uh, integrated and has a better flow into the front end than the very early 80s models and i love the way this looks it has such a stance to it and such a presence to it it looks very very elegant but at the same time very confident and that's why i think this is peak mercedes-benz design and looking at the rear same thing here super solid this thing looks like a unit when you look at it and i love the corner here that they have a curvature in these corners it just creates a very nice solid structure for this design and i read somewhere i, I might be mistaken in this but you, the reason why you have this uh, different levels to the taillights they go in and then they go up I, I, I read somewhere that has to do with the snow melting at, at winter time. It, it, it has an effect on how the snow melts and it doesn't clog up the taillights, which is a very cool detail. Definitely one of my favorite E-classes of all time. Super clean lines and super clean graphics as well. Moving on to the 2000 E55 AMG right here. This is a 5.4 liter V8 with 354 horsepower, but just, just look at the design differences here. Going from the very solid boxy unit of an E-Class into a much smoother design. I think this Mercedes E-Class, it lost some of the strength that the previous E-Class had, but it still looks very cool. I, I don't think this is a specifically pretty front end, but somehow over time, I think this has become one of the coolest E-Class out, out there because I think it has to do with the massive change specifically in the front end. Very brave by Mercedes to put out a front end like this completely new design language from what we're used to seeing from Mercedes you can see that the, the that the hood the sideline here goes up almost into the midsection of the of the side mirror while in the previous it has more of a straight line going from the front to the rear and this creates sort of a rake of the front and it slopes down a little bit more than, than previously but I do love this this view is definitely my favorite of, of this uh, generation the 2000 e55 I love how they uh, updated or modernized the taillights but still having a connection to the previous generation it's just a beautiful design and then AMG of course comes in and as soon as AMG started to, to play around with the E-Class they just took it to another level with this body kit like, that you can see right here it just does something to this E-Class the normal E320 V6 for example doesn't look special at all it looks like a boring old Mercedes but then when you have the AMG package on small details like this but at the same time they just changed the entire car I think it has to do a lot with the monoblock AMG wheels obviously of course now moving on to the 2006 e-class amg and now we get introduced to the legendary 63 number so this is a 6.3 liter v8 with 514 horsepower in this beast and you can see how they modernized this design from the 2000 model it's not so vertical in the front end it kind of stretched out the sides into the corners and have more of an angle on this ellipse instead of having it be almost straightforward, creating more of a, a bit of a more elegant look to this design in the front end. I really like this generation E-Class as well, specifically in the rear view. I think this is a gorgeous design. We have some nice clean line flow in this design, proper Mercedes-like. 
we still have the same kind of styling. Look at this piece right here, for example, the previous one having the same AMG early 2000 lines and body kits. I absolutely love this generation of AMG and the styling that they added, subtle features that makes a whole world of difference in the design. And then you have the quad tailpipes at the bottom as well. Not really bazooka tailpipes, but they're still pretty good compared to the twin pipes you have on the 2000 model. Moving down to the 2012 E63, now it's not a 6.3 liter V8. Instead, they reduced the, the volume of the engine to 5.5 liter twin turbo with 550 horsepower. So they upped the horsepower by about 35 horsepower by adding twin turbo while still reducing the displacement of the engine. The thing with this generation, I think this is the one that I prefer the least in the E-Class going back to the mid 80s. I think this front end, it looks like this is uh, th these two graphic features, they have zero connection to each other and it creates kind of a, a unnatural front fascia for this design, specifically since they have a massive headlight unit inside this small piece. You also have that here, but here it has all this space around it. Here it just looks like it's crammed in there and that it's not supposed to look like this. The graphic features in the front end just clashes with each other. And I think this design in the bottom, the new AMG design with these squarish uh, features feel more like a, you know, an aftermarket body kit that's been added on, onto the E-Class. I do like the rear view of this design. I like that we have a nice shoulder that kind of fades into this area. Area. Then we have a second line going from the corner of the taillight going in here creating this muscle in the rear. I also like this solid looking headlight uh, taillights right here and we still have pretty similar styling from AMG. Clean design but what brings it down is definitely the front end of this design. Going in to the 2017 E63 AMG. Now we have a 4 liter twin turbo so they keep reducing the displacement but it still has twin turbos. This brings it up to 600 and 12 horsepower in this 2017 model and looking at this this is one of my favorite e-classes of all time i think this is just a gorgeous machine we have nice elegant clean graceful headlights combined with a sharp shoulder nice line flow in the front end we have some organic looking features in the front compared to the previous just look at the difference between these two this looks like a low polygon model and then they kind of rendered it out fully in the 2017 model down here with all these gorgeous curvatures that we have and the thing is they these graphic features they connect well with the top half of the design of the front fascia too it works together to have this flow in this design Design that we have all around this car and it continues from the front all the way to the rear as well and these taillights definitely some of my favorite taillights in the E-Class lineup. I think they look solid. They bring back this unit design that I, I've been missing since the first generation up here. I think this is a great modernization of the early 80s and 90s E-Classes into something that looks very modern. You can see that the shoulder line continues from the corner of the taillight into the front end. We also have this lower part down here and we have these now rectangular exhausts, which is typical for AMG these days. They were introduced here in the 2017 model. Now looking at the latest 2021, it has the same engine as the previous one. So a four liter twin turbo V8, 612 horsepower. What I do think about this is I do not like the front end. I think Mercedes is not supposed to be this aggressive brand and I've talked about this so many times before. Look at the grill in the previous generation. An elegant, beautiful, graceful smile and now it just turned into a, a frown here in the new generation. And The, the word I'm, I can describe this front end with, uh, the, the, the best that pops up in my head is it looks a bit soggy. The front end is kind of hanging. Down. It looks like one of these um, uh, deep sea fish, the blob, I think it's called a blob fish. This reminds me of a blob, blob fish front fascia and that it has to do with these angles in the grill. And I don't think the headlights are as elegant as they were in the gorgeous 2017 model. However, looking at the rear, I'm a huge fan of this rear end. I think it looks nimble. It doesn't have the same kind of unit design that we have in the previous generation. I still prefer this. But this rear end is a lot better than the front end in the new generation. We have a gorgeous shoulder going right here. A nice line at the bottom as well going 
into the bumper and creating a, a nice flow around the car obviously going on the other side as well and I love these wheels as well I think they are the same as the previous generation as you can see right here we have the rectangular bazooka tailpipes in the lower part there as well so with that said what if I could combine the 2021 graphics with the 1991 E500. What would that look like? That would, to me, be the uh, ultimate E-Class. And I've said this before, it would be so cool to see if uh, car companies could actually bring back some old designs. I think that would benefit, uh, you know, put a spark into designers right now, the, the, the people that are working as car designers, because they grew up with these cars as their uh, idols, as their uh, dream cars. And imagine getting the brief from the management of Mercedes, for example, to say that, okay, we're gonna take the 1991 E500, but, we're gonna, the whole interior is gonna be a brand new interior, completely modernized. The, the, the mirrors are gonna be new, modern, modern looking. The door handle is gonna be new, but the, the foundation of the E500, the, the proportions are gonna stay the same. So what you're gonna do is try to melt new with old and see how that turns out. The proportions of the E500 in the 80s and the, and the 90, 90s, the, the roof line or the greenhouse is almost 50% of the height of the overall uh, body looking at it from a side view and that won't work today. Those proportions are not modern at all and that, that would be something that would date this design if we were to make a new version of the old E500. So in the very, I think it's the very end of this redesign, I'm just gonna lower the roof line by a couple of inches to bring out some modern features and modern proportions of this design but the front view you know having these organic shapes that we have in the in the new e-class in combination with the lower half of the front end which is very rectangular in the e500 from 1991 combining those it might clash a little bit but i think it's going to work here i think it's going to look very cool specifically if we modernize the internal parts of the headlights. The grille, I love the grille of the E500. I think it's one of the best looking Mercedes grille of all time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna black that grille out and keep it as it is. I wanna keep the proportions of the top half of the front being exactly the same as the original 1991 E-Class, but just modernize the, the graphic features and so on in this car. I think it's, I think it's gonna look really cool. And if it was me, if I could design and if I could dream up my favorite E-Class of all time, it would look something like this. I'm a huge fan of the 80s and 90s Mercedes designs, specifically when AMG came into the picture. So having something like this with the new AMG wheels and lower the overall body, because if we have the new front end, the new front bumper onto this, we need to kind of lower the car all around because if it sits if we have the new front end in the, in the front only, it's gonna sit lower in the front and then go up in the middle part in the, in the rear, and that's not gonna work. So we're gonna have to add some sort of side skirt and some sort of uh, kind of diffuser maybe that wraps around the corner that we can peek at from this angle. Very fun redesign to do, and I'm super happy with this result. I wish car companies brought back old designs, make them EVs, do whatever you want, but just bring back some old, nostalgic designs into into their current lineup i think that would be so cool thanks for watching and i will see you in the next video